Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for another devlog for Dauphin. This is episode 4 in the series, and I'm kicking things off the day after releasing episode 3. You guys seem to really enjoy all the progress we made in that last episode, so I'm feeling pretty jazzed up myself to keep the ball rolling. As a quick recap, the last devlog focused on two main things. The first was the player's ability to execute attacks, and the second was the creation of a basic enemy to receive those attacks. Now I got both of those things developed, but unfortunately I did not actually get around to coding the interaction between the player and the enemy, such that the enemy would actually register those attacks. That's where we're going to start things off this week. Today is Saturday, and it's actually been a really relaxing one, consisting of mostly way too much Animal Crossing, with a little bit of quarantine-style workouts sprinkled in, so at least there's that. It's going on about 3.30pm now, and although I'm not quite sure how much of my afternoon I'll be spending working on Dauphin, I do want to try to improve the animation behind the player's attack. That was a pretty clear piece of feedback from the last devlog. So I'm going to get started on that now. Don't know if I'll finish it this afternoon, but I'll certainly catch up when I do. Hey everyone, it is Monday evening now, just after work, going on about 6 o'clock or so, and I think tonight is a perfect time to check in because I have made a ton of progress on refactoring the way that attacks work since I jumped into that on Saturday. Here's what the attack looked like on Saturday, and here's what it looks like today. As you can see, I've pretty much entirely rejected the notion of a side-to-side -side swipe with the one-handed weapon in favor of shooting almost a wave-like projectile from the player, and I think I have a pretty good reason for making this decision. What I essentially wanted to do here was completely decouple attacks from weapons, which is a really important concept for me. What that means is that if you're holding a stick or a sword, you're not bound to executing an attack that just looks like you're swinging something in your hand. It could really be anything at this point. It could be calling down a huge column of fire or shooting out lightning bolts or something. Now what this does is give me way more creative freedom over how I design these attacks, and for the player it gives you way more diversity and variability in the way that you build and play your character. In addition to all that, because these attacks are basically developed as standalone entities that don't have to be paired with a certain weapon, I have total control over how I want to customize them. If we look at my scene here, you can see over on the left side in my hierarchy, I have my primary attack as you saw before and equipped in there is a basic slash controller. Now that's kind of what drives the logic behind this attack. If you look over here in the inspector, you can see that I've created a bunch of different modifiers for this attack, which is really cool actually. So we'll go ahead and change some of these. First, you can see what it looks like now. Pretty basic, pretty weak looking with a pretty long cooldown actually. So we'll go ahead and we'll change the range to two, doubling that. We'll double the attack speed as well. Cool down to 0 0.25 and let's double the scale. Now let's go back and check this out. As you can see, it's had a pretty huge effect on the attack, which is awesome. Now just imagine equipping a different piece of gear like a weapon or a helmet or a chest piece that changed these modifiers on the ability that you had equipped. It's starting to feel like a classic ARPG, which is something that I really love. Now if you're wondering how I accomplished this, I basically took the same approach with attacks as I did with enemies. I've got an abstract attack controller class here which defines a bunch of base attributes and behaviors that every attack will share. These are all the attributes you were just seeing me tweak before. And if we scroll down here, you can also see that I do a bunch of state management that I assume will take place with every attack. For example, a ready state, a perform state, a channel state if it's like a beam that you're channeling or something like that, a charge state if you're charging up a big attack, and then cool down and completed. Apart from that, I also have what I'm calling a contract here, and that's what subclasses will need to implement if they want to take advantage of this functionality in the base attack controller class. I am thrilled by this progress I've made over the past couple days and just really excited with how this turned out. I can't wait to start creating different loot that modifies all these attacks. I think it's going to be super fun. Anyway, I have been working very hard on this for the past few days, so I'm going to take the rest of the night off tonight and relax. We'll catch up sometime tomorrow. Hey everyone, back on Wednesday evening with another update. Now my plan was, following all the progress that I made on Monday, to have a nice little kickoff to start development of the functionality that will allow the tax that I've been working on to have an effect and actually damage the enemies that we built in the last devlog. Unfortunately, that has just not happened yet. 
Instead, when I was reviewing the progress that I made on Monday, I realized that I just could not go on with the player not having some kind of animation to accompany his attacks. It just looks really bad to me to have the player running around and keep his hands down at his side when he's casting these attacks. As a result, I spent a lot of time yesterday and this morning building these new animations that you see here. I think these look really great, and just looking at them you might think they don't look like much, but really what happened under the hood here was an entire rework of the way I'm animating my player character. So I want to go ahead and show you guys how I decided to do it. For reference, here's what my set of player sprites looked like in a sprite on Monday. And here's what the player looks like now. First thing you'll notice, of course, is the change in appearance. The player went from wearing basically an entire outfit to almost nothing. It became kind of important to me to establish the notion of the base player appearance, meaning what the player looks like when you don't have any extra clothing or equipment equipped. And this is what that state looks like for now. If you glance further down, you will see the craziness that is all of my frames and layers for the player's animations. What I've done here is actually break out each individual body part of the player into its own layer, meaning I can enable those and disable those at will. What this ultimately amounts to is that I can export sprites and animations for each individual body part so that I can animate them independently. More importantly, this means I'll be able to more easily replace those animations if I want those sprites to look different. So you can see, for example, if I disable everything but the head, and I just have an animation for the head there, it'll be easy to replace that with something like a helmet. Same goes for the chest piece and legs and anything that I want to put on the player's arms. It's a lot of work up front, but it gives me a lot of flexibility down the road to customize the character. This approach also gives me a lot more control when it comes to layering my sprites. If you pay close attention to this animation where I swipe to the right here, you'll see that the stick is underneath the player's right hand and in front of the player's chest. This is a nice little effect that just gives a little bit more polish and depth to this 2D scene. Under the hood, I used all these sprites to create animation clips for each individual animation for each body part. And if we look into my Project Explorer here, that's what you can see. It was a whole lot of work to create all these animations and all the animators, but then I was able to take a nice little player animation controller class and hook that into my player state management. And although this was a lot of work, it's actually not that complex, so I'm pretty happy with the result. I think these animations could still use quite a bit of work, but for now I'm just happy I have the system in place to execute these animations, so if I want to come in and change them in the future, it should be no problem. With that said, I think I'm ready to start developing combat. I'm going to take a little bit of a break since I just finished up work, so we will go ahead and catch up once we have the ability to slay some crabs. Alright guys, it's going on 7.30 now. I've made some good progress, but unfortunately I feel like there's still a lot to be done. I want to take some time to relax before work, but before I do that, I'll go ahead and show you what I've whipped up this morning. Alright, so here's our little demo. If I go ahead and head to the south and smack up some crabs, you'll notice a few things right off the bat. The first is that the collisions are working. I'm able to get the callback from on trigger enter and get all the information about the collision that I need in order to process it, so that's great news. The bad news is this knockback behavior here. You'll see it's really choppy and overall I'm just very unsatisfied with it. Now I think this has something to do with how I'm manipulating the rigid body of the enemy here. I'm using rigidbody.move position to walk towards the player and rigidbody.add force to try and respond to this knockback. Unfortunately, those things don't seem to be playing well together and it's just very choppy effect that I'm not a fan of. So I think I'm gonna have to spend some more time with the enemy to get this behavior looking how I want it to. With all that said, I feel good about the progress this morning, and I think I just have to do some research on how to properly implement that knockback effect. For now, I think I'm going to go pour another cup of coffee and relax for a little bit before work, so we'll catch up later. Good morning, everyone. It is a gorgeous Friday morning here. It's supposed to be like 80 degrees or something today where I live, so really looking forward to a drink on the porch after work. Anyway, for now, I'm going to pick back up my work on the combat. I want to get this video out to you guys tomorrow morning, so I'm just going to see what I can crank out right now and after work. So once everything's wrapped up, we'll catch up. As I'm working on that, it's probably a good opportunity to mention that unfortunately, due to everything going on in the world, I've come to the decision that it would be kind of irresponsible to take any non-essential trips to public places. For that reason, I'll be suspending my visits to the local fish store until everything blows over. 
Rest assured though, if you sponsored a shrimp, your name will remain on this board in my office until your shrimp goes into the tank. I will be honoring every donation made, perhaps just not in the immediate future. Alright guys, I am back at 8.30 now with good news. Thankfully it did not take me long at all to seriously clean up this knockback effect and have it looking and feeling much smoother. Now you'll see that if I attack these crabs, rather than just teleporting to a location behind them, they have this kind of quick slide. I think this just looks way better and way less choppy. Really all I had to do to achieve this was make sure that the crabs were not still trying to walk forward while they were being knocked back. Once I stopped making those calls to move position on the rigid body during the knockback effect, this worked just fine. So since I'm trying to get this video out tomorrow, that was going to be the last big task that I tackle for this devlog. But as I was tinkering around in the enemy code, I figured out I could go ahead and hook up the defeated state for the crabs. So if we attack the crabs twice now, due to the base damage on the weapon, the crabs will be defeated and disappear. Now this obviously is not a very fun animation and we're just deleting the game object, but in the next episode we'll be coming up with a more creative way to defeat the crabs and hopefully implementing loot drops as well. With that, I think I'm ready to wrap up the devlog. I don't know about you guys, but I am really thrilled with the amount of functionality and polish that I was able to add to Dauphin this week. As always, I hope you enjoyed the devlog, and if you did, leaving a like certainly helps out the channel. Thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next episode.